So you are curious how much force can your prop make, how efficient your motor is and how to make the most simple DIY testing rig, then this video is definitely made for you. Stay tuned, we're gonna cover it all. Maybe you know why you need such a testing rig and just looking for some inspiration how to build one quickly and easily. However, there might be someone curious why a testing rig is useful, so let's really quickly explain what it is all about and why you need one. You might ask why we need a testing rig if there are already data sheets from manufacturers and their testing setups. Well, not every manufacturer is really generous with enough of data. Some of their testing setups can match your needs and it's all good to stick with it. And some are just shady as f like this little Raystar motor from Banggood pulling 2 kilos like f really. Anyway, you want to experiment, try different props, see the efficiency, power consumption and see if the motor is badly overheating on the highest power output. I'm into long range flights, so I care about pull, efficiency and what's the biggest prop I can safely use on my motors. Only because I said quick and easy doesn't mean it can be upgraded with some sensors or electronics, but this is supposed to be a good, rock solid baseline that can be built with the simple tools and materials. I need it to be compact, so when I don't need it, I can hide it somewhere in my house and it won't take up much of space. So what you gonna need? Wood. Not this wood, this wood, plywood. The thickness choice is up to your needs. In my case 20 mm plywood will be rigid enough for a few kilos of prop force. Why I choose this configuration? I seen setups with motor attached to a scale upwards, downwards or even on some questionable arm forcing the air to the ground so your readings will get definitely affected by the environment. And with that setup, you are experiencing a prop wash like quads do with ground proximity. By placing your motor on a vertical arm, you are reducing these effects. Your prop is not in proximity with something in front or back. I'm not saying this is perfectly accurate setup, but definitely close enough to real performance. Of course, the placement of my testing rig in this video is not correct. It's only for demonstration purposes, so ideally you want way more clearance around. One arm is vertical, one arm is horizontal. They have a pivot point from which the length of the arms has to be perfectly equal, so you won't have mechanical advantage. Therefore, the force generated at the motor side is equal on the scale side. But how to connect both arms so it's all rigid? I went with a little OP joint on table saw, but it's perfectly okay to make a butt joint with glue, screws and eventually reinforce it as I did with these triangles, glue and nails. This looks like one piece of wood. As a bonus, I sanded it a little and gave it a white coat. You can see my vertical arm is actually shorter because I designed this universal motor mount that sits at the end. But the offset from motor axis has to be compensated to match the total length of the arm in order to be equal. If you don't have a 3D printer, it's not that hard to make such a pass from plywood or a metal plate. At the scale side, I 3D printed this circle pivot point at which the force will be applied. If there is any mismatch in arm lengths, there is always a way to fix it by its placement. You really have to triple check that those two force points are in equal distance from the arm's main pivot. At the main pivot and its base, there is a smooth bolt with partial thread, so there is almost no friction and seriously, this runs really smoothly. I would not even bother to use any bearings, because it's super easy to lift. After all, the arm doesn't travel so much. There is enough clearance between the supports and the arm, plus the entire arm has an offset about 10 mm from the base. And now to the electronics. Your battery, power meter and either servo tester for PWM signal or receiver with controller if you want to use your radio. Which is also very helpful because I can cross check the values from telemetry. Then of course adequate ASC for your motor. I have a load cell, Arduino and LCD display so in the future I can make a system for more sophisticated measurements but I wanted to give you guys some ideas how to make a quick and easy testing rig. 
that does not take up much space in your home and does sufficiently what it's supposed to do. Anyway, hook it all up and you are ready to make some wind. Just before you do so, take care about your own safety, family and pets. I'm not responsible about any of your injuries. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Leave a like and I will appreciate if you will subscribe to my channel. Take care and I will see you next time.